The latest, more budget-friendly FPV goggles from DJI are here, and today we are going to give you all the specs, pricing, and information overall for the money against the other goggles in the DJI range and other manufacturers that I've tried personally. These are a good option. The key in terms of success will be the release of the O4 Air unit and how much compatibility comes in time with the new N3 goggles and other drones and devices, etc. So the N3 goggles are a box style and certainly they're a little chunky. However, they've kept the weight down and you do not get any kind of pendulum effect when you're wearing them. One huge advantage is the fact that you can keep your glasses on during the use of them. Very handy, isn't it? So as someone who absolutely needs glasses, <laughs> to well see, there is always a few seconds of mystery when I take off the goggles three, etc., and put my glasses back on. So actually, when out flying, it is handy to be able to keep my glasses on. The big initial release is focused on the bundle of the N3 goggles with the motion controller three and the updated firmware of the DJI Neo, making it more of an FPV beginner whoop than ever before. But soon, these goggles will be stocked in the UK as an individual product, and we're told that that will be within a couple of of weeks and priced at a pretty incredible £229. The integrated headband design is back again with the N3 and despite my huge head there was plenty of scope and adjustment there from both the velcro straps and the ratchet tightener at the back of the goggle strap to make things fit properly. It does allow you to get a nice tight fit and even though I'm wearing my glasses I personally didn't feel any pressure on the glasses being pushed to my face and I got a good seal in terms of light leak. It was easy in terms of moving around to get a light leak or two creeping in there, but there are a few ways to adjust the goggles if this is the priority and it was just when I was moving around. There is a one tap defogging button to kick the internal fan into motion, something I wasn't sure would actually be included on goggles at this cost level. The screen is LCD with 1920 by 1080 resolution and a max refresh rate of 60 hertz. It is capable of 1350 nits in terms of max screen brightness. All of this with a field of view that I was quite impressed of at 54 degrees. Now on some goggles that are not as wide in terms of screen field of view, it does make me feel a little weird. Not quite dizzy, but the N3 has none of that. The N3 uses 04 video transmission as you might expect. So initially it is being marketed as compatible with the Neo and Avata 2. Although there will of course be more compatibility as time goes on. The launch of the Neo saw wider compatibility right after the launch, remember, in fact, as soon as our video had finished. The O4 digital transmission adopts a 2T4R antenna design. The live feed latency is claimed to be 31 milliseconds at 108060, and I saw nothing to suggest that that isn't accurate. The maximum video transmission bitrate is currently 60. There is a video out function via the USB-C port to your phone to allow people to watch via the app but there's no wireless audience mode. If you record to the SD card on the goggles you can play back in full panorama. In terms of battery life there is a claimed 2.7 hours from DJI which seems about right to me. I've not ran them down completely yet because they do last quite a while but during testing but I've noticed that there hasn't been any issues in terms of short battery life even in terms of the three hours that you get with the goggles 3. In terms of a direct comparison with the goggles 3 here is a chart to give you the main stats. Some of the hot points in terms of difference are the screen type, no Wi-Fi audience mode capability on the new N3, and at release they are not quoting the Air 3 models or the Mini 4 Pro as being compatible with the N3 goggles. That might well change though, of course. Of course, all the stats are produced by DJI under certain conditions, but they still provide a good level of benchmark when comparing the range, etc. For me, these certainly feel like a box goggle and a lesser pair of goggles in terms of comparing them to the Goggles 3, but then these are retailing at £229. I've kept away from calling them cheap or using the word budget too much, etc., mainly because with the spec and the build quality, I do not feel like these are cheap goggles. The quality seems to be there to me. Some goggles suffer very badly from the reflective feel, etc., as the uh, the lens and the mirroring, etc., bounces backwards and forwards. You do get some of that with these with these goggles. You can definitely I can see the outline of my glasses sort of looking back at me and that type of thing. But for me, it wasn't too bad in terms of the flights that I've put in so far with these goggles. If price was no issue, I would 
would probably certainly still opt for the goggles 3 but it has to be said that i really do like being able to wear my glasses during the flight if you're interested in getting a pair of goggles uk stock will be here soon and you can find an affiliate link in the description from our wonderful partners over at dji hasselblad uk as a reminder all of our affiliate earnings are gifted to charities which so far has amounted to a couple of thousand pounds so thank you for supporting the channel and charities with your awesome purchases. Any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll try to answer them. For more drone content, hit the subscribe button. Sean out.